nobody gets it 100% right in the interview. Nobody. Hey guys, before I start, I just want to say thank you so much to those who support my channel. I am so excited to make more videos. If you're new to this channel, my name is Janet. Welcome to Janet Asks. If you're a high schooler like me who also struggles in figuring out what you want to do with your career life, don't worry because this channel is for you. I'll be interviewing people all different occupations and hopefully that can help you figure out which career is best suitable for you by understanding the careers a little bit better. So if you're interested, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Today, our special guest is someone you should be paying attention to because he can help you earn a spot in your dream job. And I'm sure we all know that job interviews play one of the biggest roles in determining where you'll be working. And it is a complicated and nerve wracking process. And so let's hear from the expert on job interviews himself. He worked as a technical recruiter in many companies like Facebook and he has his own YouTube channel where I'll be linking it down below. You can learn more about job interviews there and I know I definitely need to learn more about it. So let's all welcome Jeff. Hi Jeff, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming here on Janet Asks. I'm excited to learn more about what it really takes to do well in a job interview. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for having me, Janet. I think, you know, thank you for what you're doing because I think it's, there's not enough advice going out there, especially to high school students about how to prepare, how to get ready. It's not something that's really coached, right? So I think yeah. what you're doing is awesome and helping people learn about jobs and different types of positions. It will just give a lot of context to people uh, in your age group. It'll be awesome. Thank you so much. Are you ready to get started? Yeah, fire away. All right, let's do it. So first off, let's start off pretty basic. So what are some of the basic tips for anyone going into a job interview? Yeah, so I think foundationally, we can't wing it. And I think that that idea or concept of, I know my stuff, it's not a really good idea. You have to prepare and practice. And so do your research on the company. Just find out a little bit more about them and don't just go to their website, go to their social media. That's one. Secondly, if you're applying for a specific job, look a little bit more at the job description. What are some of the constant themes that keep coming up? And then write down your examples. Really think about all the things that you did and when you think about writing down your examples, really focus on doing actions, meaning not telling a story about what happened, but actually talking about what you did. If you can do those three items of just diving into the research, looking at the job description and really being able to write down at least a few good examples of what you've done, it's going to be great. And then the last piece is, especially for the more entry level jobs, there's gonna be commonly asked questions. Like, tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work here, et cetera? Really practicing those questions over and over again will lead to success throughout your career. Yeah, those are really good tips, especially about researching and being prepared. And um, like you said, these jobs require, or these job interviews require a lot of preparation and um, practice before going into it. So, how else should people? be practicing and pre preparing for the job interviews. Yeah, so it's a great follow-up question because all this prep is good, but it's not good if you don't practice with other people. So ideally you're practicing with somebody who's pretty experienced at doing it, but the reality is find a friend buy them a pizza, right? And you, you could even be in different rooms, invite them over or whatever the circumstance is, hop on video and just practice with each other because just saying it out loud really helps. And then you wanna ask your friends questions such as, was it really clear? Was it organized? Did you understand what I did? Did you understand the scenario or situation? So very, very basic questions just so they had a good idea of you. But yeah, the number one thing is we can prepare all we want, but until we practice it, 
it's just not going to be as valuable or helpful. I like what you said about practicing with someone else. It's one thing to practice by yourself and it's another to get someone else's feedback. Um, so what are three um, so, some, what are three most important qualities that most companies look for in a person for a job interview? Yeah, so one is going to be all about positive body language. So you're smiling, your shoulders are back, you're making good eye contact. So body language is one. Uh, the second one is that you really talk about collaboration. So everything is, I partnered with Jane or I partnered with Sue, or you're really talking about how, when you did things, you worked with others to get them done, that you don't do everything on your own. And then I love positive words. So we stay away from words like conflict or problem. We use challenge, we use opportunity companies hire positive people. So you can come in with that good body language, right? You can talk about collaboration, you can be positive. There's lots of things and items that are gonna to lead to success, but those are a few that I've seen really, really help people. Yeah, those are definitely good traits. And um, do you give an idea about these interviews? What are some of the common questions that almost all companies ask and how would you advise people to answer them? Yeah, so the three big classic questions that I hear the most are, tell me about yourself. Um, it's, why do you wanna work here? And then it's maybe a future question, like where do you see yourself in a couple of years, three years, five years? Then there's other more classic questions like, tell me about a conflict. Tell me about your greatest accomplishment. And maybe a little less common, but questions I want people to be prepared for are the how or what questions. Questions that don't ask for an example, but just think about your problem solving skills. So that would be directly correlated to the role. So if you have, if you're going after a sales role, they might say, how do you work with other salespeople? So you will get some questions that don't actually ask for an example. So understanding that there's common and classic questions and a lot of questions, especially for more entry level jobs are gonna focus on examples, but there's also gonna be this open-ended side of questions where you have to problem solve and really figure out what your strategy is, not an example. Uh, yeah, I never thought about that before. Um, what are common jobs that almost all companies look for? Yeah, so we really have this component of, we have our technology jobs, right? We have our HR jobs, we have our sales jobs. And then depending on the company, then we're gonna have project managers, we're gonna have product people. It's a huge, huge landscape. When you're thinking about what kind of job you want, you wanna ask yourself, do you love sitting in front of a computer and really diving in and digging into the numbers? Are you really somebody who loves working and dealing with people? Are you somebody who likes doing high level strategy problem solving? So you wanna kind of pull away maybe from the job and think about what are some of your strengths and what are some of the items that you love to do and you're passionate about? And that will correlate more, then you'll be able to find like roles. But all these companies, it also depends on the size, right? The bigger the company, the more specific and specialized the job will be. And the smaller the company, if you go work at a startup, you are going to be doing a lot of things. You might be HR sales, you might be doing marketing, you might be doing everything. So um, it really depends on the company. So I would say remove the role and think more about what you're good at, what you love. Those are very good points about choosing what you love and what you're good at for the starting point for thinking about what you want to do. Um, so we all know that a good resume is very important. It's like the ticket to get hired. So what do you think a perfect resume looks like and what are other things that people should bring to their interviews? Okay, 
So great question on the resume. I, I have a very, I think have a very specific way I think about resumes and what we want to do before we even think about the resume is we want to remove, we want to remove the resume and think about the audience. And so what do we know about our audience? They don't have a lot of time. And so you'll see these crazy formatted resumes and all this funky stuff in resumes, throw it out. We want to make our resumes very, very simple. The number one key on resumes for me is a summary and a bulleted summary. So if you see a specific job, you're going to have an already created summary. And let's say you see a sales job, for example, and you have a couple of those skills, but maybe they're not in your summary. You want to put them in your summary. What does that mean? We create our, we create our initial resume, but we change the summary based on the job we're applying for. So you don't want to send in the same resume every time. And the reason why we do it in the summary is because it's very easy. It makes it easy for us to change out a couple bullets. And then based on the job, we only need to spend maybe a minute or two editing. And so that was the first question. And then the second question is, once we go back to face-to-face -face interviews, the only other thing to bring besides your resume, if the company tells you, they might say, look, we have it all, we have it on our computer. You don't need to be, bring your resume, but you always want to bring like a very basic portfolio. And that's just a notebook with like a pen and paper because you always want to be able to handwrite notes, always. So that's really the only other thing that you would want to bring to an interview besides your resume. Yeah, um, what you said about the resume with the summary and how the recruiters want to go through them pretty quickly. And I think that's a, those are really good points. Um, interviews can be very stressful and very unpredictable and it's easy to mess up. What are some of the most common mistakes that people make in their job interviews? Yeah, so let's focus really on the on the kind of messing up and the anxiety and stress, one of the biggest pieces of information or advice I can give is, is to breathe and slow down a little bit. You can even see the way I speak. I speak very slowly, I pause a whole lot, and that's intentional, it's to slow down so that I can connect with people. You wanna do the same thing in your interview, slow down. If you get a question and you don't know the answer, you can just say to your interviewer, I'd love just a few seconds to think through it. They're always going to give you that time. So slowing down is one of the most critical points. And then the second piece I would say is it's not question and answer, question and answer. It's a conversation. So you can ask clarifying questions. You can pose some questions throughout the interview, make it a conversation. The more you get them talking, the more they're going to uncover what they need what they want, what they want you to talk about. So those are the two. Just take some, take some time and just really make it conversational. Those two items, probably especially at the more entry level, are items that I just don't see a lot of candidates doing. Yeah, um, your tip about slowing down is actually a very good tip for me in this YouTube channel where I interview people. And yeah, um, you said about how interviews are not question and answer, which is different from what I thought it would be. And yeah, so I know a lot of times um, job, at the end, they would ask if you have any questions. And so what kind of questions should people bring to ask the interviewer? Great question. Um, so what I like to focus on is positivity. And so we're really trying to ask questions that are going to bring our interviewer up. So, and get them talking about themselves because the science shows that people love to talk about themselves. So we're going to ask them questions like, what do you love the most about the company? What do you like the most about your position? What is one item that you're working on right now that's really exciting and challenging? What do you think are some of the best skills of the people on your current team? So everything is positive, positive, positive. There's a couple of really key tips with questions. One, you never want to run out of them. 
ever. So you come in with literally 20, 30, 40 questions. If they keep answering your questions, keep asking. Every five or six questions, you can say to your interviewer, I have a lot of questions. I'd love to keep asking them if I'm allowed to, but I want to recognize your time. So it's, you never run out of questions, but you want to check in with them. Um, and then what was the one other point I wanted to say? Yeah, have a list. Just make sure you write them down. You do not have to remember them in your head. Um, if you come in with questions, it shows you're organized and you might scratch out a couple of questions because they might answer them during your time, but never, <laughs> ever say, I don't have questions. And I can tell you, I have been on the other side of the table doing a lot of hiring. And when somebody had no questions, I've, I've never hired that person, 0%. It's a, it's, you have to ask questions because it shows interest. It's a, it's a very, it's a really good pause moment for us because I think people don't realize how important that is. Yeah. Yeah. I never realized how important it is. I've, I've never went to job interviews, obviously, but I had to go to interviews for schools and, and that part is probably the part that I always like kind of slip up because I don't really have that many questions yeah so um what should people do after the job interview if there's anything that they should do yeah so the first thing i want you want everybody to do is i definitely want you to send thank you emails and so sometimes we're not going to get our interviewers we're not going to have their direct email. So if we have an HR point of contact, we're going to send the thank you notes to them. One of the weird tips that I have, but it's really helpful is if you, let's say you interviewed with four people and you were working with a recruiter, send them four separate emails with each of those thank you notes, because then all they have to do is put in the person's name and hit send. You're just making it very easy for them. Thank you notes are short and sweet. I enjoyed meeting with you today. I enjoyed talking about X and I'm looking forward to next steps. Sincerely me. And, and that's, that's all you need to do. Now, the second step is if you haven't heard back, let's say it's been about a week, it's totally reasonable to check in with your point of contact and just say, I'm still excited and interested in the role and I just wanted to check in. So those are really the two follow-up points, but thank you notes, especially, they should be sent the same, or thank you emails, they should be sent the same day. Yeah, those are very, very interesting points. Um, we're actually at the final question. Um, okay. So basically, if you could give any final advice or words of encouragement to people, especially for the people who are doing it for the first time, what kind of advice or words of encouragement would you give to the people regarding their job interviews? That nobody gets it 100% right in the interview, nobody. You are going to have moments where it just doesn't go perfectly. And so your ability to move on or even just maybe laugh at yourself a little bit and say, okay, let's go on to the next question. Like I can do better. Or it's just an acknowledgement that nobody's at a hundred percent. And I would consider myself a professional interviewer. I've, and I've personally interviewed thousands of people and I mess up in interviews. We all do. So you're really trying to get to that 90%, 91, 92%. Nobody's a hundred percent. And then the second piece is like anything in life, you have to practice and prepare. If you don't, you won't be successful. And being good at interviewing will literally be a huge game changer in your career and life. And so putting focus and massive effort into it is really, really critical to success. People just don't do it. And if they did, they would, it really will lead to a better life, honestly. So. Yeah, those are very um, good advice. And your advice throughout this whole video has been very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me again. I appreciate what you're doing. We just want to get as much good advice out there to the YouTube community as we can. Make sure that people are getting good advice, getting the right advice that's going to help them really be successful.
I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and I hope you learned a lot from Jeff about interviews. I learned a lot and I learned that asking questions is important and that no one gets it 100% right. So don't lose hope if you mess up and I'm sure that all of you will get the job that you want. So yeah, I, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to follow more updates, please follow my Instagram. I hope you have a nice day. Bye.